Okay. What's this? Communications. Talking with our neighbors. We take communication for granted, even within the varied languages we find here in Hunrath. But when we suddenly find ourselves among other intelligent species who don't share our culture, history, DNA, or vocal cords, it requires a huge amount of effort for the beginning of rudimentary chatting. This quick overview will set the stage for what to expect when communicating with our neighbors. The Mofang were the first non-humans we met with at least some level of similar physical vocal generating abilities. They picked up human words quickly. This early mimicry resulted in what the species became to be, came to be called. Even though they were able to mimic, mimic single words and simple phrases, it became evident over the years that huge grammatical differences were not easily overcome. Some have proposed that the difficulty may have arisen because the Mofang insisted on attempting to learn every human language, and as a result, were never able to lock onto any consistent grammatical structure. Nevertheless, in spite of the rudimentary sentence construction, it has been very easy to communicate, and it has been unnecessary for us to learn their language beyond a few simple phrases and proper names. If you'd like to learn more about communication with the Mofang, please contact Tam. Mofang. Villain or villain. The villain have presented a particular communications challenge. From what we can gather, they produce sounds using two large reed like structures inside opposite sides of their heads. <clears throat> the vibrations generated are channeled to resonance chambers in their skulls, where they are combined into a complex low frequency dual tone. The low frequency bitonal sounds are not only hard for humans to hear and resolve, but impossible for us to mimic. And the villains hearing is also oriented towards low frequency, so they are unable to hear most of most of sounds associated with human speech. Therefore, communication with the villain has relied on technology. They have adapted consoles, which the villain fluently control with vocalizations, to be for use by other species. Over the years, some individuals of other species, including a few humans, have learned to communicate very effectively using this method. Humans have been able to pick out some higher frequency characteristics of certain low key villain words over the years. And although we can't speak to them in a way that the villains can understand, we are occasionally able to hear and recognize these words when spoken. If you'd like to learn more about the villain, please contact Vito. Oh, it looks like Vito. That's what I said. I thought it sounded like Vio. No, oh, I said Vito. Okay. Uh, Vito. It's a V. V, 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 V. Arai. None of the stages of the Arai morphology have any vocalization apparatus. Because of the obvious synchronization of the barnacle flash and the ability of the pawns to provide for any addresses... At for and address. For and address the needs of the polyarchs, it was assumed that the species could communicate effectively. It was not until Farley began to spend large amounts of time in the poly in the polyarch antechamber that the first clues to this communication became evident. After months of research, Farley began to have limited success with receiving some kind of simple messages that were coming from the polyarchs. It is apparent now that the polyarch has been attempting to communicate the entire time, but they themselves have been experimenting with various channels until they finally got a response from Farley. After this breakthrough, others were able to tune into the polyarchs and learn to listen. Both the polyarchs and the pawns have a simple organ that can sense human vocal frequency, enabling them to sense simple responses from humans, but over the years, Farley was able to learn to speak to the polyarchs via a related form of extrasensory transmission. If you'd like to learn more about communications with your eye, please contact Farley. Okay. Before we go into the book, let's look around. What is this? A projector of some kind. What? Uh, try pushing the slide thing. Oh, it's probably, uh, it's, if it's near the stuff, maybe it's something about communicating with the uh, other species. Uh, look at the box on the table. Are there more slides? Nope. No. I'm going to turn this off for now. Yep. And in fact, we can probably, um, we can probably trim all that where we were reading the stuff. People can read that for themselves. Oh, a tape recorder. Play. That's not. Oh, what rewind. Oh. Where'd they get batteries? Okay. Well, I feel 
like I should, I should say something. We, we haven't heard from Shavar. So, well, um, should we assume that um, Shavar, well, that the, the attack is inevitable. It's, we, we just don't know when. So, um, Shavar and her family, um, and others she trusts, I guess, but they'll, they'll arrive when they can, um, when they can, without, um, giving, you know, like, uh, covertly, she paused it yeah i'm gonna pause this i need to go feed roly okay oh well, then I'd... oh oh that was the pause endy check oh, oh other side of course um okay well yeah i need to go feed roly <laughs> you click the pause in the machine <laughs> rather than pause in the no recording. no that's what i meant to do oh okay Did now i feel bad that we didn't write down what uh, CW said at the beginning because I'm not clear who they were going off to fight. They said something like that Mo Fang battle. Yeah, you said Ma Mo Fang battle. But it was for the Mo Fangs or against the I don't Mo know. Fangs. We all lost everything. Oh. Oh. Everything but our stories. Oh, cool. And they shouldn't be forgotten. I was three. It was April of 1980. Ah. Cecil is rewind, rewind a little bit. Well, where's Cecil? We haven't got him written down there's anywhere, Cecil. do we? Oh, okay. Oh, Cecil was what year? Uh, I believe. We all lost everything. Everything but our stories. And they shouldn't be forgotten. I was three. It was April of 1983. Cecil, it was 1870 for you. 1870. Pam and Vera, you'd tell it like it was yesterday. Pam and Vera. Pam, not Pam. Yeah. There's 62 and years. that's where all of our new stories began, that light. It streaked across the sky, mesmerizing, but unnerving. Some of you were alone, I wasn't. My dear grandma, God bless her, rejoiced as if it was some forebearer of good fortune. Vera, you said you were all smiling. None of us understood. But, well, we followed. Whether it was in the deep woods like 
Cecil or right outside town like Jane and Jenny, we were drawn to see more. Grandma lifted me from the carriage on the porch and walked into the yard so we could watch it unobstructed. Even in daylight, Joseph, you said, was gloriously bright. But in the twilight, it was spellbinding. And we all felt some kind of trepidation, and yet attraction as we approached it. And it approached us. So close. Yes, that's it. I guess I hate to. Uh, oh, there we yeah. go. I I don't know if we heard all of Farley's sigh. Uh, I'll redo hit a. Oh no, we actually. Uh, oh, if we flip it over again, it'll be back to Farley's side when 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 we come back. Yeah. Let's flip it over and I'll fast forward it a bit. Okay, there we go. I had I had some tapes that look basically like that. Yeah, I think that was it. I think. Okay. All right. So we have some. So CW is trying to get back to 1870, and the latest date someone was here was 2009. Uh, be... Let's see. Oh, oh, pictures of the uh, the things, the aliens with swords. Those look like the Mofang. Uh, though that one, I'm guessing, is one of That's the. That's a villain. Yeah. Um, let's see. What's that? That looks like the tower with the floaty things around it, doesn't it? Yeah, From kinda. the top. And I'll let us pick them up. And that's that's a mirror, I think. <laughs> yeah, that does look like a mirror. It looks like people with bows and stuff. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, okay. Okay, one. Seed pair? Mm hmm. Oh, they must have taken a picture. Okay. Two, find planets, planets with, with similar, similar atmospheres. atmospheres. Earth. Three, Three, swap. Four, tree from seed. Heart. Earth. 
What happens at fruition? Swap where? Home? When? Maybe dead? Uh, heart connected, path open. When mature. Heart superposition. For species, species meet. meet. More seed pairs scattered throughout the universe. Why scattering? Okay, so Earth has the stamp thing. Is connected to Soira, Mulfang, which mm -hmm. seems to connect. Okay, so those two. Swap. This leads to heart. But okay, what tree are they swap for tree from seed. What? What do you suppose the white line? So are we on this? So is this saying that something from Soira went to Earth? That doesn't make sense. It could. They're th they're, that's what I think they're thinking. Are they saying that all three of these came here? Heart connected, path open. Presumably. When mature. Presumably the tree. They said since it was when the tree uh, matured. Yeah. But what do the thick lines mean? What does this say? Oh. oh, back reward item. How cute. My brother, small and nice, sings constantly, and now... As as noisy a, as a rock a concert. concert, if only he would be quiet. <laughs> okay, I guess it's time to get to the books. Seed information. Oh, God oh, damn geez. it. Okay. Um, Ambassador seeds were first documented yeah. about 150 Earth years ago. They occur about once every 400 days. If the trees remain healthy... <laughs> excuse me. Natural seed swaps occur between pairs of seeds that we now know drop simultaneously from healthy trees in paired sphere. When each seed was touched by species in, in sphere, the swap occurred, sending a baster from each sphere to the paired sphere. Location of the swap is defined by the locations of the pairs of seeds. After the first swap, the seeds recharged quickly, allowing for a quick return. First meetings were intense, but naturally short. It was quite a surprise for both the Mofang and us. Over time, the seeds required more time to recharge, producing longer visits between species. Collector seeds. Everyone who arrives is familiar with the collector seeds. The bright light that we were all drawn to right before we the event that brought us here is a collector seed. What new arrivers may not be aware of is that these seeds, like all seeds, come in pairs. When the tree drops a collector seed on the ground, it signals that its twin has begun its quest for a new being. That search may take hours or it may take years. When in an appropriate situation, a natural threat of death is found, the seed activates and swaps a smaller but varying seed, very uh, varying sighted sphere from Earth or whatever appropriate homeworld here to Humanrath. Oh, I see. So whatever chunk we got so it swaps the location so right. we got uh as hunrath became more populated we would watch for a newly dropped collector seed collect it and place it on the entry canyon area this allowed us to provide a more predictable entry experience for new arrivers and provide a single area to collect any resources that may have come along with the new arriver unlike ambassador seeds and mother seeds collector seeds do not seem to survive the inner core is spent, leaving only the lifeless outer husk. Mother seeds, postulated but unverified. First suggested by um, Lima Hamsa 2232BH. Birth, maybe? I don't know. The notion of mother seeds extrapolates the behavior of the lesser seeds to a super seed. She posited that the process that actually created the paired seeds was similar to all other swaps, but a match. But on, but on a much grander scale. The idea is that two seeds from a mother tree were scattered on the galactic winds to find appropriately similar environments where matches were found. Some process was triggered that swapped large portions of landscape between vastly different worlds. Aleman notice, uh, noted that the tree's locations in the center of the sphere suggest that the trees grew from these mother seeds. Because of the similarities, it has been conjectured that re-swapping the entire environmental spheres might be possible with a larger scale version of the Ambassador Seed Machine. Right. So we've Ambassador got Seed Machine? Yeah, I remember he was talking about producing um, yeah, but, uh, seeds. Yeah, but that would imply the Ambassador Seed was a machine. 
No, no, he was uh, he was making ambassador seeds with a machine. Okay. Oh, he was making the seeds. Yeah, I remember him, him mentioning that, and his uh, that was the thing with all the technical jargon that we didn't understand at the time. Oh dear. Well, we didn't take notes.